So I realized about halfway through that I, I had started to design fiction and I had ended up with a nonfiction. I got kind of distracted. So this cover, if it was a fiction, I wouldn't have a sub uh, tagline. Sorry, I wouldn't have a subtitle um, like this with the benefits. I would have a tagline or a quote or a review. And if it was fiction, I'd probably use something a little fancier as well. It's fine for nonfiction to do a really simple title. Um, for fiction, I would have picked something a little bit more fun, at least for some of it. Um, maybe something like that, I don't know. And the title, of course, would be different if it was fiction. But I'm going to go ahead and jump to the next picture, which is this one. And because this is kind of a scarier picture, this would be a, a horror, maybe a thriller. And so we would mostly just use some rough textured fonts to communicate that this is a different genre. And so I could duplicate this title and move it down. I'm just closing a couple programs because my computer's going kind of slowly. So if this was a horror, I'd want some bigger, bolder fonts with some texture. And you can call them cracked fonts or broken. This one's called Satan Possessed, which is a decent name for a thriller font. but I don't really like that one. And I wouldn't go with red because it doesn't stand out so well on the black. It's okay, it just it doesn't stand out as well on, on the black as I would like. And I think white is just as good. And depending, of course, on what kind of a story this is, that's gonna matter too. If it was a, a vampire story, I might use gothic fonts and I would use more red and black. But if it's a ghost story, I'll use more of a glowing effect on the text. You don't have to give everything away. Like, I wouldn't try to put a ghost on the cover if it's a ghost story. This one has bullet holes, so it'd be more for an action adventure. You want to do a lot of research on fonts and make sure you find one. It shouldn't be too, too dramatic or too fancy, except in certain genres like paranormal romance where they really appreciate beautiful fonts. You don't want to kind of make it too distracting. On the other hand, getting the font right is really going to set the tone for the genre. And there's hundreds of thousands of fonts to pick from. So you can experiment, and you really want to get down to about three top choices to get some feedback on. And then there's also, if this is a, a psychological thriller, a murder mystery, the font would probably be smaller and more spread out. Maybe something like that, if it's like a suspense. But if it's just like a axe murderer story, then the letters would probably be crammed more together. Use the text and the spacing to indicate how you want people to feel. And the cover is not really about It's not really about um, communicating the details. It's just about getting people to feel the right feeling. And you do that with a lot of spacing. And so again, because this is a fiction, I wouldn't have a subtitle, but I'd have a tagline. And my tagline might be something like, he never knew how much he needed her until she ran away. I don't know, something. A tagline is just to communicate a little bit more information about the story and probably introduce some intrigue or mystery.
So I can do something a little bit like that. I like having small text on the cover. Even if people can't read it as the thumbnail, I don't think that matters at all. Having a little bit of small text, if it's the right small text, um, it can just make it look like your cover has more going on. If you're an indie author and you don't have any small text, it probably means you don't have any reviews, you didn't think about a tagline, um, you, you basically you have your title and your author name only, and you didn't know what else to put. Having a little bit of small text just shows that you've thought out what should go on your cover and that you're doing things more professionally. So this is pretty monochromatic. I could make something, if I wanted something to stand out a little more, I could change the colors. I could make this red if I wanted, but I wouldn't make it a deep red. I'd make it kind of a pinkish red because it's going to stand out better against the black. So I could do something like that. Um, and that could be, I mean, a fine horror cover. And quickly, I'm going to do one more with the other picture. And this would be more maybe a fantasy, maybe, you know, the Lost in the Woods. It could be a psychological thriller, but if so, I'd want to change the colors. I'm going to make another video in a minute showing you how to change the colors and add texture and things. But if I was just keeping this simple picture, I can just duplicate my title again so I can play with some fonts. And then I'll move that up on top. The author name looks fine already down at the bottom. And when you're thinking about colors, you want your title to blend in with the background picture. So I could argue that making it solid black is going to stand out the most. Like if I was worried about making the text legible, which a lot of indie authors worry about needlessly, um, I'd probably do something like that, make a really black text with a really big outer glow. But that doesn't look very good, and it doesn't match the cover. It kind of takes, it, it's so eye-catching that it kills that subdued effect of the background art. So really, you don't want to have solid black text that stands out. Um, instead, I'd probably choose a color from the background. Maybe that blue from the tree. And then I could even make it a little bit transparent. If I change the opacity, that'll just make it kind of blend in a little bit more. And then I could do things with the blending if I wanted. I can do it an overlay or a soft light so that I still get that transparency, but it also stands out. For example, that's something I like. So then I would just change the spacing because I had a lot of spacing for that horror cover. And then we need to change the fonts. And again, the fonts are really going to need to match the particular genre. So you've really got to be sure what genre yours fits in and what kind of readers you're trying to appeal to. And then find fonts that really fit with that specific genre. You could also go really simple. Um, sometimes it works to have very simple fonts for some genres. Although I still wouldn't use something that comes pre-installed with Windows, like Times New Roman, or um, you want to find something that's a little bit cooler. I'm just going to call this the trees. Oops. Not a great title, but it'll work. I'm going to duplicate that layer just so it stands out a little more. 
but I'll keep that transparency effect. That's a little too much. And again, I'd want a tagline or something in here, or maybe a review if I can get a review early enough. Sometimes it's nice to have a little review up on top and then a tagline down in the middle. You don't want so much text that you kill the background image because really the background image, the mood is the most important thing. The mood of the background picture and the style of the font is what appeals to the right readers. All the other stuff you can make much smaller and less aggressive and kind of blend in. You don't want all of the elements fighting for attention because then people will just run off. Like People aren't going to stay and look at your cover and figure out all the details. They're just going to take one glance at it. I'm even going to take off this tagline here. I'm just going to leave it one layer. So, and you don't always have to do this, but because this is a kind of a decorative serif font up here, I'm going to change my author name to sans serif because I like to have a little bit of contrast. And I'll usually just use open sans or lato, which are simple sans serif fonts. But you don't have to do that. You could keep the serif and it looks probably just as good. And that's kind of a done, I mean, I could use this as a cover and it'd be a pretty effective cover. So I'm going to stop this video here and then I'm going to go on to the next part where we start adding characters.